What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at ASRock's brand new mini PC in their 4x4 line, known as the ASRock 4x4-8840U. Obviously, the name gives away what we've got going on here, but this is one that I've definitely been waiting on, and it really comes down to the optimizations that ASRock does in the BIOS. Just power management is really good on this, and their Ryzen line of 4x4 mini PCs at lower wattages seem to kind of perform exactly the same as others at even higher wattages, and that's one of the big reasons I love these little mini PCs. It's definitely not a looker. They're very plain Jane mini PCs, but they get the job done and perform really well. We've actually got quite a bit packed into this one here, given that it's their brand new 4x4-8840U. And inside of the box, along with this new mini PC from ASRock, we're going to get a mounting bracket, really good to just stick on the back of your monitor. We've also got a 120 watt power supply that utilizes a barrel jack. Glad to see that they haven't swapped over to USB Type-C yet. This also comes with a SATA cable because it will accept a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom of the unit. And when it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, full size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, and dual USB 4 ports. These do run at 40 gigs. Not much going on around the sides, but flipping this thing around, you can see we've got our power input. And one thing I do like about their new line is this does have a wide input range, 12 volts up to 20. So you can run this on a 12 volt power supply, which is really great. We also get two full-size HDMI ports and dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet. So in total, we can actually do four displays out of this thing, utilizing the HDMI around back and those two USB 4 ports up front. Most of the time when you run across these 4x4 mini PCs, they will come bare bones, so you need to add your own RAM and storage. Pulling the bottom off, super easy. We've got four screws and they've got a new heatsink assembly system in here. In the bottom, we can add a 2.5 inch drive, but this is gonna make contact with our M.2 drives and this will accept two. Plus when it comes to the RAM, we've also got a spot here using those thermal pads. So it will make contact with the RAM, extracting the heat out of those components. And when it comes to this system, it will accept up to 96 gigabytes of RAM, but I'm just gonna be going with 32 gigs from Crucial running in dual channel. And the fastest we can go here is 5,600 megahertz. And when it comes to our M.2 drive, it accepts one 2280 and one 2242. Both of them are Gen 4 drive slots. And I just went with a one terabyte Lexar 620 M.2 drive. And you can see we've got that 2242 slot free. It is a Gen 4 slot. So one thing that I was really considering was adding an Oculink eGPU to this system. And if that's something you're interested in seeing a video on, let me know in the comments below. We can actually build a pretty cheap dock using parts from Amazon and really up the GPU performance on this thing. ASRock is offering a couple different variants of this mini PC, one with the Ryzen 5 and one with the Ryzen 7. That's exactly what we have here, the AMD Ryzen 7 8840U. Eight cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.3 with a boost up to 5.1, the Radeon 780M iGPU, this is based on RDNA 3, and we've also got Ryzen AI, everybody wants AI in their mini PCs. The NPU in this will do up to 16 tops of AI performance. You can also add up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5 here at 5600 megahertz. We've got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2, and that even comes with the bare bones model. And this will run Windows or Linux. In this video, we're gonna be running Windows 11 Pro, but I did want to show you one important setting that we do need to change in the BIOS. Before we jump over to Windows, I wanted to give you a look at the BIOS and one very important setting when it comes to these ASRock mini PCs. Once you boot these up for the very first time, this is going to be in normal mode. With this, since we've got that 8840U, this is about 28 watts, a little bit of a boost up to around 30. But what we want to do here is go to performance mode. That way we can boost up to 45 watts with this unit. Now, taking a look at the other settings here, there's not much else that we can change when it comes to power. So with the basic BIOS here, we don't have full control over the performance, but I have tested something known as smokeless UMAF. And basically we can get into the hidden AMD settings with most systems out there. And yeah, you could take this up, but for this video, we're just gonna be in performance mode. And another thing here would be our fan mode. So under hardware monitor, we've got automatic, we can go to manual or we can do full on. I'm just gonna use automatic mode here. And that's all I usually change here. And in my opinion, going to performance mode on these ASRock PCs is a must if you're gonna be gaming on it. So again, one thing I really love about these ASRock mini PCs is the optimizations they put in. Now, while this isn't gonna run at a higher TDP like we see with the HS series 8000 chips, 
this is still going to give us some stellar performance. And we've got that Ryzen 7 8840U, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600, and the Radeon 780Mi GPU. I always like taking a look at what kind of TDP this is running at. And remember, we went to performance mode. So just running a stress test right there on the CPU, this jumps up to 50 watts and it'll back on down to about 42. So you just give it a little bit of time. Fan in this thing does kick up, but it's not horribly loud. It's got a blower style in the top. And I mean, since we're working with a small form factor unit, yeah, it definitely needs to spin up a little higher. But the cooling system here is doing a pretty decent job. And to tell you the truth, if you're not going to be doing a lot of gaming on this machine and just use it as an everyday desktop PC, web browsing, email checking, document editing, you could even do some photo and video editing on this, you don't need performance mode. 28 watts is going to be more than enough for all of those everyday tasks that most people do, especially something like web browsing, not going to pull a lot at all. And we've got Wi-Fi 6 plus 2.5 gigabit Ethernet if you're into that. 4K YouTube video playback is something I always like to test. So we're going to find a 4K 60 HDR video here. We definitely need to make sure that we're at 4K. Turn Stats for Nerds on. And if you keep an eye in the top left hand corner, you can see that this is going to play through all the way without dropping a single frame. And I am connected over Wi-Fi right now, Wi-Fi 6E with this mini PC. And power consumption on this with streaming 4K video from YouTube is around 12.6 watts from the wall. Doing all of my testing here, I've got this plugged into a kilowatt meter just to see what we get up to. A lot of people want those really low power consumption PCs, and I do love the fact that we can actually power this from a 12 volt source up to 20 volts, so we've got that wide input range. Now, I want to check out some benchmarks that I ran on this thing, and the first one we have here is Geekbench 6, single core 2516, multi 12,479. I don't know if we took the wattage up to let's say 65 watts if we could do any better than this on this mobile chip. And this is one of the big reasons I love these ASRock mini PCs. It really comes down to the optimizations they've done in the BIOS, power management between the CPU and GPU. Checking out some 3D Mark scores, Night Raid 29,833, Fire Strike 8,005, and you know we had to run a time spy coming in at 3,400. The only other time that I've seen this kind of score out of the 8840U is on handhelds with 7500 megahertz RAM. Remember, we've got SODIMM here, so it's only going up to 5600. And even with this comparatively slow RAM, we're getting some great scores here. But the next thing we need to move over to is some gaming on this thing. I've been keeping an eye on Helldivers 2 performance on these iGPUs, and we're still kind of right there at 900p low with FSR set to balanced. Now you can see, I mean, we're on up there. We're way over 60 and you could adjust the settings accordingly. Few of the settings at medium, so at low, medium, mix, but we will need to use FSR no matter what. Here's Fallout 4 with the latest update, 1080p, medium settings, and I haven't seen it drop under 60 FPS. We're actually seeing an average of around 71 across the board here, and it's really playable on this machine. To tell you the truth, with this update on most of the PC stuff that I've tested, given that I do like using these smaller, lower powered PCs, I haven't seen a huge jump or decrease in performance yet. Had to go back to some OG Skyrim just to see what we could do. And I am connected to a 120 hertz monitor. Was kind of hoping we could do this at 120 stably, 1080p ultra settings, but I'm not complaining here. And I know it's an older one, but it's still really great to see that we can get an average of around 89 FPS. I always like to throw in at least one fighting game, so I went with Street Fighter 6 and we're at 1080p medium settings. I knew we'd have a good time with this because even on the 7840U, we can actually run this at these same kind of settings locked at 60. Using the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p medium settings, AMD CAS set to 70%, so that's kind of resolution scale. We don't have FSR here without any mods, and with it like this, we're getting an average of 66 FPS. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 1080p balanced preset with FSR set to balance. I've been having a really good time with this game on these iGPUs, and by the end of this run here with the built-in benchmark, we had an average of 118 FPS, and a low of only 72 on this machine. And you can see we are at 1080, but that resolution scale with FSR 3.0 is set to balance, so it's taking it on down. Still looks pretty good though. 
And finally, Cyberpunk 2077. I was actually expecting a little more out of this. Uh, we do see some pretty good performance out of this game on these RDNA 3 iGPUs, and we're kind of right there hand in hand with the same kind of performance we've seen on the 7840U. And one thing to keep in mind is when I go to low settings here, I turn everything to low. That's exactly how you need to run it on these systems at 1080p. Moving over to total system power consumption. Like I mentioned, I've got this plugged into a kilowatt meter while doing all of my testing. And one thing to keep in mind here is we are in performance mode. If you're in balanced mode, most of this will be much lower except for idle. But at idle, we're pulling 7 watts, 4K video playback up to 12.6, average gaming around 53 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to draw from the wall was 78 watts. And that's an extreme use case scenario. And again, in balanced mode, you will get much lower, but you're not going to see the kind of performance that we saw in this video using performance mode. Overall, seeing some really good performance out of the ASRock 4x4 8840U, and it does come down to the optimizations they do. We've got a few modes that we can use here, balance mode, performance mode. If you want to get the max out of it, obviously you're going to go to performance mode here. And like I mentioned, you really don't need to go to performance mode if you're just going to be using this as an everyday desktop. We just kind of wanted to get that TDP up in performance mode so we can get the clocks up on that GPU. Most of the time when you're doing web browsing and 4K playback, even some video editing, it's really not going to be that necessary with this mini PC. So I will have at least one more video coming up with this mini PC. We've got that extra M.2 slot in here, so I think we're going to be adding an Oculink eGPU. It does have USB 4 up front. And we could always plug in a Thunderbolt eGPU, but we're just not going to get the kind of performance that we could out of an Oculink setup. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit that like button. Think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. And if you're interested in learning a little more about the ASRock 4x4 8840U mini PCs, I'll leave some links down below. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.